It's not just the artists they love, it's the artists they know they can add value to. Indify is a brand new marketplace of music connecting artists to many different investors. In today's day and age, I'm not sure artists are treated like founders, even though they're expected to do work and build businesses like founders. If an artist is able to create traction or create a moment, but that spark isn't able to be amplified by someone who mm -hmm. understands how to do digital marketing, understands mm -hmm. how to pitch to DSPs beyond mm -hmm. just the impact of the capital, that artist doesn't achieve their full potential. Our thesis is around artists with traction and pairing them with strategic investors and building a tool that allows them to digitally create agreements that are equitable and, and always artists first. What's going on? Welcome to the new music business. I'm your host, Ari Herstand, author of How to Make It in the New Music Business, the book, third edition, coming very soon. Today, my guest is Shav. He goes by Pretty Boy Shav, uh, the artist, actually, but he's also, why he's on the show today, is he is the CEO of Indify. Now, Indify is a very innovative company. Uh, we get into the weeds on, on what they do, but just overall, kind of 30,000-foot view, they help connect investors to independent artists who are starting to catch and help fund uh, the artist's songs and potentially their careers. So, uh, they had discovered artists like Khalid, Billie Eilish, and Post Malone early on in their careers based on their internal technology that they used. They used to be a very influential blog that would write about it, used to have some uh, tools that would assist the labels. Now they're catering primarily, well, just to the independent artists. Um, really innovative model and something um, that I'm always excited to find the companies out there that are innovating in the new music business. And this is definitely one of them. They have also, uh, you know, artists that have kind of grown and launched, I should say, from their platform include Leah Kate, Seb from Seaside Demo, Pink Sweats, and many others. Anise for Sun and Moon and Leave Me, Pink Sweats Honesty. So uh, this is a, a very fascinating conversation. I think you're you're really going to dig it. You can check them out, Indify. Dot io is the website or you can find them on all the socials as well you can find pretty boy shav on on all the socials and on spotify check out his music he's great find all of us that make show happen at ari's take on instagram tiktok and twitter you can find me at ari herstand on instagram and twitter visit ari's take.com get on that email list that is where you're going to get the most up-to-date information on all new music business stuff. So head on over there, get on that email list. And, and real quick, just pause the show. If you could leave us a five-star review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, that really helps. And hit that follow button. Now that you've paused, hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button. Make sure that you get us in your feed and uh, you'll get all the future episodes. All right, let's kick into the show. Welcome to the show. What's up, Ari? How are you? I am doing well. Uh, I'm excited to chat with you. You know, I um, so I was at a music conference uh, a few weeks ago, and I was shooting the shit with uh, some of the YouTube music people at the bar, mm -hmm. and they were just kind of chatting. They're like, you know, you know who you should talk to. You know what's do really cool in this space? There's these innovators. This like this cool company that it's like no one's doing anything like. I'm like, oh, what is this? Like it's Indify. Have you have you heard of this yet? I'm like. I think I'm actually scheduled to interview the founder CEO and I'm like pulling up my calendar. I'm like, wait a minute, we do have something on the book. So, and this is, uh, I've been, you know, that was like the fourth time that I've been hearing something about IndieFi over the last few years. And so I'm excited Amazing. to like jump into this conversation and uh, because, yeah. you know, I don't typically have companies on to pitch their shit um, mm -hmm. unless... They're doing something truly innovative and something that is disrupting the music industry to assist and help independent artists. Because that's what I'm all about. That's what we're all yeah. about. And uh, I think what you're doing, at least from what I've read, sounds like you are doing that. So first off, I just want to, um, you know, uh, say great work with everything you're doing with at least what I've Thank read. But so I want to I want to hear, you know, for people that have never heard of IndieFi, just tell us what it is and what you do yeah so you know at indify we believe artists are founders and i think in today's day and age um i'm not sure artists are treated like founders even though they're expected to do work and build businesses like founders which, which i'm sure we'll get into so 
Yeah. What we've built at, at Indify is an alternative to the traditional music industry. It's the independent investment marketplace of music. And it's a platform that allows artists to raise funding from strategic investors while owning their music and doing so mm -hmm. on equitable terms. And so mm -hmm. in the last few years since launching the uh, investment marketplace side, and I can get into our history a little bit, which I think is fundamental to why I think we're having um, some success in helping independent artists, but sure. we've you know helped helped artists raise over two million dollars uh, in in funding, which mm -hmm. actually in the scheme of things isn't that much funding for the outcome of one point six billion streams for independent artists that um, basically have raised on Indify. So it's something that we're really proud of, and um, you know artists that are independent on Indify have reached today's top hits. They've reached mm -hmm. Jimmy Kimmel Live. They've reached. Mm -hmm. They've been synced in, in Euphoria season two, which is everyone's favorite. And uh -huh. so um, <laughs> I think we're just really proud of breaking new ground and new frontier um, and helping those artists who deserve it reach those stage, but obviously while keeping the lion's share of their music. Cool. You mentioned uh, independent investment marketplace of music. Yes. Explain what that means. So, you know, I think fundamentally, uh, there's a lot of different kind of conversation around will how should artists be funded in today's day and age? And I think sure. for us, our belief, um, honestly, not too dissimilar from venture capital, is mm -hmm. that artists, just like founders, uh, deserve strategic value add on top of just capital to really make a difference, right? Sure. Like um, in this day and age, especially, you know, if an artist is able to create traction or create a moment on TikTok, Reels, Shorts, social, streaming, you name it. Um, but that spark isn't able to be amplified by someone who mm -hmm. understands how to do digital marketing, understands how mm -hmm. to pitch to DSPs beyond mm -hmm. just the impact of the capital. Um, you know, you could end up in situations where that artist doesn't achieve their full potential. And I think that's really like at heart why we're doing it. I'm an independent artist myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I have an album out with 10 million streams. So I kind of know the struggle and hustle of like trying to like promote yourself. I love your TikTok, man. Like I think what you're doing on TikTok is amazing and yes. I'm jealous because I haven't <laughs> cracked that app myself, but, um, but I think that's why, you know, what keeps us centered is we empathize with artists, but I think specifically when it comes to the investment marketplace, I think our thesis is around artists with traction and pairing them with strategic investors and building mm -hmm. a tool that allows them to digitally create agreements that are equitable and, and always artists first. Well, I think labels would argue that that's exactly what they do. They are strategic investors. Uh, they invest in artists, but they're strategic partners. They have the infrastructure. They have the connections. Uh, how are you different from labels and why yeah. you argue that it's it's better to work with Indify than, than work with a label? I love that question. Um, and I think on a primary level, on an overarching level, Mm -hmm. The economics and these deals are fundamentally fundamentally flipped in every which way. Like a, a traditional label deal, if we're just talking, you know, what is the cookie cutter deal? Mm -hmm. It's a five album deal. Generally, deals on Indify are for one single song. A traditional yeah. label deal is 80%, 85% in favor of the label. Generally, mm -hmm. that's flipped to 70%, 80% in favor of the artist. Label deals extend for you know, lifetime plus 73 years is what you usually see in, in the 60 page contracts. Indify deals extend usually three to five years. And like I just said, in, in these paper contracts that are 60 pages that are dense, yeah. you know, these contracts could take six weeks to six months. And in this day and age, artists mm -hmm. need to move in 12 hours, right? Like, right, right, you right, know, right. if you have something happening on TikTok, you have to be able to capitalize on that in 24, 48 hours max, or else you might miss that moment. And on Indify, mm -hmm. We've digitized the deal process to be standardized and artist friendly, similar to kind of how companies raise where they have standardized terms and standardized documents uh, that are founder friendly. And you're effectively, you know, essentially like picking your content, your um, years of the kind of agreement, mm -hmm. the percentages, which post recruitment always have to be 50 50 or better for the artist. And your license, which always has to be a license, it can never be ownership in, in favor of the uh, investor. So these things are, you know, effectively, this model is mm. completely flipped from the traditional label ecosystem. And just to add, honestly, in this day and age, the, the most valuable folks are those who can get you on playlists and get yep. you digitally marketed. Mm -hmm. A lot of our investors that we've curated very carefully over the years, and I can explain kind of how we even found uh, those investors, mm -hmm. they're the folks that the labels are paying to run campaigns. They're just not charging an arm and a leg, taking mm -hmm. those X, Y, Z cuts 
and they're giving you kind of like the actual benefit of working with them directly. So mm. that's another huge advantage um, is you're getting direct experience from the best digital marketers on the planet. And and I want to uh, you flew by pretty quickly, um, but I want to hit this. Uh, Indify doesn't own the masters. So you said you license them. Uh, explain that. Explain the difference between yeah. when, a, when a major label or label owns the masters. Well, I think Indify, you know, uh, no deals on Indify allow strategic investors to own the masters. I think yeah. Indify is such a new concept that, you know, if uh, streaming is a marketplace connecting artists to listeners, mm -hmm. distribution, and, you know, many of them are like kind of have label entities on top, are marketplaces connecting artists to streaming services, making sure they get paid their royalties. Indify is a brand new marketplace of music connecting artists to many different investors. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we don't do any deals with artists directly. We're a platform and a new platform to help these artists find the right match in terms of their investor and actually mm -hmm. do the deals on platform. But wow. no deals are allowed to have ownership in favor of the label. Artists always uh -huh. keep their, we have three principles. Artists always keep ownership of their music. Uh -huh. Artists always keep 50% or more. And artists always keep creative control. And in fact, if you were to use the technology to try to uh, say, okay, I'm going to put in these terms where, um, you know, I have 51% after recruitment and you have 49 as the artist, it'll error out. It'll like, mm. it'll be like, eh, and it won't work. So these are things that are built into our technology mm. um, ground up. So you're kind of like the broker uh, between these two parties. So you're you're not getting into the deal with the artist yourself. You're not signing the contract saying, you know, we are going to represent you and take the money and all that stuff. How does Indify make money? Indify uh, only makes money on the upside of the investor. So it's actually free for artists, believe it or not. Okay. And uh, we take 15% of the investor profits only 15. once they're profitable. Yes, Got only it. once they're profitable. So if it's oh, a 70 30 deal on a single yeah. song and i can walk you through an example yeah, uh, yeah. then we're taking 15 percent of the 30 once the initial investment is returned got it okay cool so uh i still don't quite understand um what this relationship is with the investors to the artist so let me just like break it down from what i'm yeah. understanding so far is it just like um you know you have a batch of investors and you through your, I don't know, scouring the web or however you do it, and you can help me understand that, uh, find some artists that you think are interesting or exciting or talented or just buzzworthy or bubbling up on, you know, mm -hmm. streaming services or social media. You go to your investors and you're like, hey, these artists seem pretty cool. We think they're going to pop. Uh, do you want to invest in them? And then an investor might raise their hand and then you make the introduction and the investor would be like, hey, I want to give you $50,000 for 40% of your future mm -hmm. royalties. And then the artist is like, cool, that sounds decent to me. Uh, how about we just do it on these three songs? And they're like, well, how about we do 40,000, you know? And then I was like, all right, cool, done. Is Did I get that right? You got that pretty right, man. Uh, I, I'm pretty right. blown away because you described <laughs> the end of my flow. I, I'll, I'll pencil in uh, where, where you left off, but I okay. think it's beautiful that you un understand it. I don't think it's an accident that you understand it because I think you know this industry very well. But yes, um, you know, to give that context, I'd love to get into like what we did first and, and how we first started. Go for it, please. I was, I was in, I, so my, my co founder, Connor, I, um, actually won a fourth grade little league championship with believe it or not uh, which is in in that in that article that we were just talking about and uh i was late to the party because i met him in fourth grade he met my other co-founder matt who's our cto in pre-k so i've known up? these guys Where are you from forever we grew up in westchester county in scarsdale new york if you know oh, okay. scarsdale cool yeah. yeah yeah i was born in Ind india and moved to singapore and malaysia so i'm an immigrant but Mm -hmm. I, I, when I moved, I, you know, these were some of my earliest friends and cool. we grew up obsessed with music for myself as an artist, for them, Connor as a writer, Matt as a, a technologist. And, um, you know, we were very lucky that when we started kind of exploring the music industry, I ended up, uh, interning at a, a, a Warner music group in the digital strategy and biz dev department. Okay. I saw that streaming was going to become the future. I interned at Savin, which is one of the biggest streaming services in India. Yo, I saw that there's a sure. ton of Yes, exactly. I, I saw there was a ton of uh, data in those services to describe these artists. 
And when I started talking to labels, I'm assuming, you know, as kids, we see, a, 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 you know, these big major label names. And I started to see these um, artists and I started to talk to these label executives and they were like, yeah, so we use these spreadsheets to discover these artists. And I'm like, wait a second, this has like 15 artists on it. And yeah. you're writing in YouTube and SoundCloud numbers. I thought you'd have crazy technology. Little did I know, like, you know, it was really being picked from these blogs that are these 15 year old kids writing with their cousins. And so right. that was how <laughs> you didn't have a cousin in the music industry. Right. You didn't have a, a, a friend at one of these blogs. You had no shot at being seen. And that right. was demoralizing to me. So I got together with my best friends. We said, well, can we build a platform that predicts the next big music stars using actual performance data rather than mm. relationships to, to democratize the music discovery process? And um, can we use data from like YouTube, SoundCloud, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, which at the time no one was tracking for emerging artists. And we're talking to 2014, 2015, something like that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. To predict the next big music stars. So sure. Uh, somehow we got into this mock shark tank and we pitched to Jessica Alba and MC Hammer and the president of Buzzfeed, one that got 25k to start the company coming out of college. All of us, I was at Colgate university. Um, very lucky. I was scared doing that pitch. And yeah. in, in October, 2015, we get the first working version of the platform. We're in the basement and, you know, Matt builds it. So it's tracking 40,000 artists, these different data points. And Connor is writing about an artist every day to give context beyond the data. He's like, Hey, shop. There's this amazing artist named Kai. Kai was at 60K SoundCloud plays, a few thousand followers. He was in El Paso, Texas. We get on the phone with him. He's like, I'm 17. I'm getting kind of bullied in school. And next thing you know, Kai calls us after we did a Pigeons and Planes piece and we featured him on it. It was one of his first blog pieces. He was like, I appreciate you guys. By the way, I'm going to go by my real name, Khalid. And so from there, we identified Billie Eilish. We identified at 13 years old. Post Malone in 2015, SoundCloud rap as a genre. And when you say you're, you're identifying, it's because you had a blog at this time and you were kind of writing about the blog. Were you using the same technology then to identify these artists yeah. that you're using now? Yes. And so uh, we created a platform that was a subscription platform to these record labels and talent agencies to find mm -hmm. talent. And it got right. to a point where I won't say which artist, but it is documented in in uh, article publicly. But um, you know all of the major labels subscribed to it. Uh, there was huge revenue coming in for us as a company. And when we would feature an artist on the newsletter or when they jump up our rank, because again, all these A&Rs were subscribed to this tool. Sure. I mean, I remember this artist going from a half a million dollar deal to a $3 million deal the next day. We were wow. effectively creating bidding wars from inside the music industry. Mm -hmm. And this was the, the goal is to, like you said, disrupt and create value for artists who deserve it. Yeah. At the same time, what we started to realize a couple of years ago, and this is when we started to kind of develop this new platform, is these artists were getting stuck in deals, shelved, unable to release music. For every, you know, Khalid, there were so many artists that were stuck that didn't make it. And right. those were our friends. And so mm -hmm. we wanted to build a system for independent artists that was not serving the old music industry, but mm -hmm. you know, creating creating a new one. And and that's when we we made the switch a couple of years ago and we raised some funding from Alexa Sohanian, who is the Reddit founder. I want to get to that in a second. I want to pause there for a second because you realize, yes. I mean, then like that a lot of artists realize and that most people don't really understand is that getting the label deal is not the goal. It shouldn't be the goal. And that's the problem is like you were helping facilitate the label deal where at the time you probably thought maybe coming from Warner or whatever, oh, this is the goal. We can help achieve, we can help artists achieve yeah. the goal. Hallelujah. But the 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 stat is that the re reality is literally this is, is ninety eight percent of artists that signed to major label deals fail. Meaning ninety eight percent of artists that major label signed this year are not going to recoup the costs of their advance. They're not going to get offered a second label, uh, second record, and they're going to get dropped. That's because the business model of major labels is not about developing artists. They're not in the business of developing artists anymore. It's been like decades since they've really been doing that. They're in the business of making money. And so, it, you know, their business model is set up whereas they can afford to have 98 failures as long as they get two Khalids this year. Yep. You know, or Drake's or whoever. Or yeah. Drake's or Billie Eilish's or whatever. Beyonce, you know, it's like you get those two and then the other 98 are a wash for you financially. 
But those are 98 human beings whose lives now that you're probably destroying and because you're shelving them, like you said, and what that means for people that don't know what shelving means, which happens all the time, unfortunately, when you sign a major label contract, uh, it's in most contracts, they don't actually have to release your record. So yeah. uh, it's a guaranteed release that is a stipulation in some contracts. But if you don't have the clout, you can't you can't uh, demand that. So or they could release it and not put anything behind it, which is what's happening now. Like historically and traditionally, they would shelve records because they didn't actually want to put the money into printing them and shipping them and doing that whole thing. Now they're they're kind of like it's like how shadow banning works or something. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you we're gonna allow you to release it, but like we're not putting anything behind it. So good luck. And we're still gonna take 85% uh and own the masters for for life forever, uh, if anything ever happens. But most likely nothing's gonna happen because we're not behind you and we're gonna crush it. So mm -hmm. uh that's you know, I think I wanted to put context around, I think, what maybe you were seeing and what you're understanding, especially for people that are still in the mindset of, oh, I need to sign a major label deal. My whole dreams will come true as long as I can get that deal. Yeah. So, I, I, like, just to add, like, and I'm getting emotional even hearing you because it's like, it's that tragic. If you get that $1.5 million deal, let's say you even get that, yeah. right? And it's on those same traditional cookie cutter 85-15 your music has to make $10 million before you see 15 <laughs> cents on the dollar. These are yeah, the mathematical numbers yes. behind this, right? And so when we think that's the huge success, yes, you might have that money up front, but the rest of your life, and it's designed this way, you are indebted to a bigger corporation. The opposite right. is happening on Indefi. Artists mm. are negotiating down their advances so that they can take the least amount as possible and participate in their ownership as soon as possible, which will turn into 100% ownership when their license is up, which they will pass on to their kids. And these artists mm -hmm. are making six figures, high six figures, and some of them seven figures on our platform today. Wow. And that is possible. That is possible. And for anyone to tell you it's not is because they're doing shady accounting, which is what exists in the <laughs> traditional industry. Right. And and that's I mean, that's absolutely true, as we've seen all the lawsuits against the major labels and major publishers over the last five to 10 years uh, with the audits that have been happening is because it's been shady accounting and there's no reason for shady accounting anymore. Or there I mean, there's a reason, definitely. But there's no excuse anymore because everything is transparent and everything is digital. You can't say uh you know 15,000 records fell off the back of a truck like you could but you know 40 years ago it's now mm -hmm. you know all tracked so all right so you realize this you pivot a little bit you're like you know what yes. i want to stop uh aiding this system that yes. is only really helping the major labels and not really the artists that you really got into this for so then yeah. continue what on. happens yeah so um you know, I think to add to, to the realization, we also saw that it was this, you know, we were not only identifying the best artists in the world, mm -hmm. we were identifying the best investors in the world, the best people behind these artists, the best partners, because what we saw in our top 200 mm. of our rank was, wait, these same 10 managers are behind these artists. Wait, mm -hmm. these same five digital marketers are always behind these artists. Wait, all of these artists have a story where they got access to funding. So we had helped democratize discovery in music, but what we started to realize is like, we hadn't equalized opportunity. We didn't level the playing field. We didn't make it so every artist had a fair shot. And this was always the goal. So yeah. this was the impetus to be like, let us dive fully into this. And actually, um, you know, there was a case study with, I'm sure you're familiar with Pink Sweats, the artist. Sure. Yeah. We had helped Pink Sweats get a deal where he owned most of his music. Um, you know, found a partner and it was the first kind of off platform version of it. And next thing we know that record went flat. And so yeah. what we saw was an artist that now, you know, owns those records still. Thank you. Thank, thank goodness. Like, wow. and is making consistent income off of that music, like in, in an incredible way. And so mm -hmm. for us, we were really proud of creating that moment simultaneously with that kind of story behind us. I saw that Alexis Ohanian tweeted I wish I could invest in Lizzo Enterprises. And Alexis and, Ohanian, uh, the co-founder of Reddit? Yes, he is okay. the uh, co-founder of Reddit, and he's a very um, established venture capitalist. And he has a, okay. a fund called 776 now. And okay. at the time, he was at this firm called Initialized. But I tweeted back at him. I have some of these tweets framed back here, by the way. I tweeted back at <laughs> him. I said, invest, invest in the next one on Indefine. 
Mm-hmm. So next thing I know, I'm at the U.S. Open watching Serena Williams, who's his wife, actually, just, uh, uh, you know, having an incredible That's match. his new way. introduction. It's just, this is, oh, you mean Alex is Serena Williams. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I try yeah. Okay, cool. I try not Husband. to just pigeonhole him to that, but yes. <laughs> right. uh, and it, even in that match, my, my friend who knew him had brought me. And for a few minutes, we crossed mm-hmm. paths. Literally, like he was going up and I, we happened to run into him. And so... I pitched him and I told him, I'm like, hey, listen, like, there is an awful system that exists, uh, mm-hmm. which is this old label system. That means that there's a massive opportunity on the other side. And, yeah. you know, one of the things he asked me is, you know, if why would I invest in an artist? I can invest in startups. And I, he, you know, we were talking, we were jamming on it. And I said, yeah, if you invested the old way, traditionally, of course, you're not going to make your money back. But if you invest in a musician in by looking at, consistent data over three years, more data than you get for startups, right? Analyzing this artist, adding strategic value, you actually have a better chance of making your money back than investing in a startup. Music is a safer bet than investing in your startup. And he was bothered. He's like, you're a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> get away from me. Yeah, and, I've never heard that um, before. <laughs> that bothered him enough that he shot he shot us an email and he's like, let's go to breakfast and got jam on this more. Ended up talking to him, ended up talking to his firm and, and they ended up not only funding the company, but, you know, Alexis, we found has an audience of half a million Twitter followers or something like or, mm-hmm. or a big reach. And so he actually did the first investment on uh, the Indify platform. It, he's, you know, put, put his money where his mouth it is. He actually tried it out. And he said, I love this artist, Leah Kate. She was like, when he first identified it at like, a, you know, 3,000, 5,000 streams a day. And today she's, uh, you know, crossed a million streams a day. And yeah. he funded her from that moment on end wow. all the way throughout this moment. And so there's two cohorts of strategic investors. Again, like we're end is a marketplace that's connecting artists with traction and strategic investors. Yeah. If we break down those strategic investors, you have on one side, these incredible music professionals, these digital marketers, these um, managers that are young and hungry and looking to build equity of their own and not take one, get one point as an A&R on a label. I think it's about ownership for them too. But then you also have uh, an area that we're getting really excited about, which I feel like you'll find interesting, Ari, is Mm -hmm. people with influence, right? Like building an audience is one of the most difficult things. And I find that there's two ways to really do it. One, you have to crack an algorithm and that takes consistency and repetition and and great storytelling, which is something that you're doing incredibly well. But two is maybe you can have a bigger uh, influencer help give you that audience and help, help draft off of that. And so- this is something we're experimenting with. I mean, I, I pose the question, right? Like and for the future of music, as an independent artist that's emerging and rising, is it in your best interest to sign your rights away for life mm-hmm. to a major label or partner with someone like LeBron James on a single and see what effect you can make? And I think that's the sort of, okay, we just broke this industry moment that we're actually playing with. And I think Alexis was an exciting moment where he was able to share a lot of his business narrative and spotlight Leah as an independent business founder um, so, it, it, with, with his story. Yeah. So that's something we're excited about in the future. And we're starting to talk to athletes and artists about backing oh. artists themselves. Cool. Okay. So I'm starting to understand where the strategic investor thing comes in is, you know, okay, Alexis yes. has a half a million Twitter followers, so he can tweet out Leah, Kate is this incredible artist. Go listen. And you can tweet this every day because yeah. now he has a financial... Uh, incentive to kind of see her succeed, but also he digs her, but that's, you know, I get into that. So um, what other, because here, here's the challenge though. Um, Yeah. You know, what happens after that artist gets that money? What, like if, if, if an artist gets $50,000 tomorrow, I would argue a lot of artists wouldn't know how to spend that. And yeah. a lot of them would probably go blow it on a uh, studio time and yeah. an expensive producer. And then they would finish their their masterpiece with zero dollars left over. And they're like, cool, I'm going to well put it out now and see what happens. And But it's going to rise to the top. And I don't think artists know how to uh, spend their money in the most effective way. Mm-hmm. Hence why we have teams and stuff like that. So where is the additional assistance and how do you aid so yeah. they don't blow their money on studio time? So that's an amazing question. And 
it brings me to a more technical component of the platform, which I know you like to get technical, so we can get into it. Um, mm -hmm. So when you're sending an offer on Indify, I mean, and, and it's this beautiful kind of like format, which is also similar to, to Venture and, and mirrors that in, in our whole artists or founders themes. Yep. Theme, um, you know, the, the artist creates an ask, they have some data behind it, they have their like ask for the amount of capital, the percentage, the content, the amount of time, et cetera. And the investor can review those and then send an offer on, on it, to the artist, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, to to make that happen. And the, what's really interesting is um, the investor can send an offer, change the terms, kind of talk to the artist. There's almost this like bidding cycle that goes on exactly like you said. They get on the phone, but once okay. it's done, it takes 45 minutes and clicks and a, a signature, and and you can get that deal done. And sure. in that process, the funding uh, pro part of it. Is broken down into three different components: advance, which is in pocket, uh, creative, and marketing. And so you can yeah. you can start to play with the filters here. And a lot of the investors who are the, some of the best digital marketers out there, like I said, will toggle the marketing to make sure that they actually spend that on behalf of the artist. So mm. that that account that is still being accounted to the artist's funding deal. But the the investor, you know, when a label pays a digital marketer. The yeah. digital marketer, I was like, all right, I'm going to take 50% off the top. Here, it gives it to the influencers. The influencers, like, I'm going to take 50% off the top. That 100K becomes a 10K spend. Here, hmm. when these digital marketers are involved, they're like, okay, creatively, I need to blow this up. So, how am I going to do this? Actually, let me call in favors from all these different people. Actually, these influencers are the best for this. Actually, this 10K is going to stretch to feel like 100K. And this economic alignment and incentives, um, is how like that real strategic value on the funding piece builds. And a lot of the time uh, we see the investors both, you know, saying I'm going to spend this amount and I'm going to spend it on behalf on the marketing and then account to those artists like expenses and reports to say, okay. Hey, this is what I spent. Because, because a lot of your investors are digital marketers themselves. Is that yes. what that is? Digital, I would say like marketers and managers are our primary today Marketers and cohort of investors yeah got it okay and and what you were describing before is influencer marketing uh we've had a few people who run influencer marketing agencies on the show like flight house and uh vertical we've had griffin from yeah. vertical and, and austin uh from flight house and and these are the companies that you know they have um hundreds if not thousands of influencers in their network and they are the companies that all the the major labels hire to kind of blow up their songs on TikTok and what they do is they essentially pay each influencer uh you know 50 bucks 100 bucks 1000 bucks depending on their their following and their reach and their their average view count to essentially use the song in a TikTok video and if you get a hundred of them to use the song on the same day, maybe three of them will pop, 97 of them won't, but that's all you need. And now you're starting a trend with that song. And then we know that the songs you know, that blow up on TikTok translate to Spotify streams, which then you can trigger the algorithm. And then it goes up and up and up from there. Algorithmic playlists, exactly. editorial playlists, all of that. So when we're talking digital marketing right now, and specifically influencer marketing, that's what you were alluding to? Yes. And if okay. I can give you an example. Um, sure. You know the song Seaside Demo by Seb? Have you heard of that one? Yeah, yeah. So last Seb, summer. S-E-B, yeah. S-E-B, Seb. Amazing artist, incredible creative. Last summer, we noticed that song rising. Our data, internal data tools of identification, which as you know, are like some of the best out there and we're very well respected for. And so we reached out to Seb and he had actually been on the platform for eight months before that for earlier singles. So we started saw him like spiking. The platform, really, you, what platform? In Being Indify. Like we oh. have artists that, you know, hang on there. Sometimes we can see them rise and we have our oh, own okay. internal identification tools. So he was kind of, kind of climbing up our own charts. Okay. And we were like, Hey, like there's something happening here. And it seems like it's this demo of the song. Right. Yeah. And so he's like, yeah, like I put it up and it's starting to go up a lot in terms of UGC and, and something that I think User we were getting at earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, what are some of the things we look for? High streams to listener ratio on like a good amount of streams. So if you're streaming, 5,000, 10,000 streams a day, but your average daily streams and daily listeners is at a 2x or more. We actually find that really interesting and, and we want those artists on our platform because that means you have an engaged audience. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a sound that is starting to trend on TikTok or mm -hmm. Reels um, and going up in videos made per day um, or creating pre-saves for a song, we found that those things are the most amazing data points to show that these investors can add value. Okay. And so 
with this demo, we saw the traction going. We actually talked to him about, you know, making sure that he actually put the song out because there was so much electricity, put it on Indify by Sunday, you know, click buttons, talk to his investors. He's like, this is the person I want to go with. And, you know, you'll see a song come out and it did like X number of streams per day. And let's say a song comes out and does 50,000 streams per day. Without that strategic value add, it might dip to 40, to 20, to 10, sure. and it'll level out at five. You'll make 5K a year from it. That's great. But instead, the song came out and the investor, Golden Kids Group, Nick Miller, he manages 347 Aiden and Saunders, a few other amazing artists. So he's been experienced with TikTok hits before, even though he's very young. He, you know, has the ability to make plays around it. And what he does is he he's had experience with digital marketing. So he makes sure that the right influencers get paid and boom, it starts to go up. He makes the right calls to DSPs. It gets number 15, the, the highest independent spot in New Music Friday. The next week he calls Apple, he calls TikTok, it gets the banner, it gets moving on mm. uh, Snapchat's spotlight, it gets 600,000 creates there. It gets playlisted, uh, I, I think it's the Apple World Record. It gets into Pop Rising and by week four, it's written on Spotify, Seaside underscore demo. Yeah. This song reaches the biggest place in the world. Today's top Today's hits. Top hits. Yeah. I think it was 135 in the country on the chart or globally. I can't remember. Wow. And eventually it got synced into Euphoria season two. So in, the investor is going to win. The investor is going to win big off of that. And again, yeah. like you said, like often independent artists. But you know who wins the biggest is Seb and the artists because yeah. they're going to keep the lion's share. Of Did those that parts. manager? So who came up with the? Because uh, I know that song uh, really caught on TikTok because of the Harry Styles "Watermelon uh, Sugar." Yes. The the um, it was kind of a remix, I guess, with the song. Mm -hmm. Right? W was that Seb's doing, or was that that manager's doing, or the influencer marketers doing? That was Seb's doing, and he huh. posted like every day. I think for eight months, he said. And, and you know, Connor and I talked to him, and we were like, "Wow!" And and this is the thing in this day and age. I think you, you know you've seen this narrative too, right? Like artists are expected to build their audiences. There are yes. tools out there for artists to build the audiences. So you know, if you do consistently post, and I think authenticity is missed in that conversation. Yes, yes we have to post consistently, but we also have to learn our message and what we want to say and what resonates yeah. with us because that's what translates on TikTok and these apps. If we do that consistently, right, we can build kind of the early makings of um, um, of spark. And I think what mm. Indify does is help turn that spark into a flame, right? Like artists, it's not just that artists um, on Indify keep 70 to 80% of their music. They deserve to, because a lot of these artists are building their audiences themselves. Indify is just helping them find the partners that can help them go the extra mile. So did this manager then take over and become his full-time manager? No. He did is, he find another it, manager? He struggles with this sometimes because he yeah. doesn't know how to explain. Effectively, he's like, I'm an angel investor in this song. Right. And we can angel invest in startups, but this should become normalized. Like what happens if Drake is instead of sharing a song on IG, he's like, I angel invest in this song, right? He right. can bet on sports. He can, uh, he can angel invest in companies. He should be able to back the next big talent and culture because he is culture, right? Mm -hmm. So I think for us, we've enabled that. So then, I mean, what happens after, I mean, continue that story. That's a, that's a really great success story, but I, I would fear yeah. That these are all just going to be flash in the pan moments, and these investors are looking to get their cash quick. How do we make sure that we're, you're not just turning into another major label where they sweet they get to keep their ownership, but then they disappear and now they're left over and they're like, I don't know what to do with my career, and it putters out. I love your question <laughs> because is you have foreseen all arcs of our trajectory because yeah. up till today, right? We've helped these artists raise two and a half million dollars. We've helped these artists read we 1.6 billion streams. We've helped these artists be on Jimmy Kimmel, Euphoria, sure. all the, today's stuff is these incredible platforms. But that's where we've started. And what we've started to do is help these artists have their first breakthrough moment, right? And that's a very important moment. What our goal is, and, and where I see the vision of the company going forward, because you always have to see it before you do it, right? And believe it before you make it, is we become not just the early stage investment marketplace of music, but the entire in investment marketplace of music. And, and mm. what I mean by that is, um, you know, there's an artist, Anis, and he did his song uh, again with that same investor, actually. It was an incredible investor, Nick, Sun and Moon. That song went and crossed a million streams a day. <laughs> that's how big that song got. And it was played, that's the one that was played on Kimmel. 
I mean, it's one of the biggest independent songs I've seen since being in the music industry. And, and I'm sure. just so grateful to be a part of it. What really kind of tugged at our hearts is that he chose to do the next song with us as well. Uh, mm. Leave Me, where he chose to still have Nick looped in, uh, brought him on as a partner, and he's continuing to build with Nick. And what I think you'll see is these strategic investors, especially once they start to get more capital behind them to deploy into bigger checks and grow with these artists, they're going to be able to facilitate not just the early stage funding of these artists, but the next level and the next level. And so, you know, one of the things that we're working on is onboarding bigger investors, uh, on bigger strategic investors, you know, folks that have been in the industry a long time and are starting their independent shops, which are, which is a movement that, that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And, um, those, those investors we're hoping can service the artists, not just at like the early seed stage, but at the bigger series A and middle stages for them to grow into independent superstars. And I think Anise is, you know, a lot of people say you got to do it with three songs. He's done it with two. And I think he's going to hopefully continue building and improve yeah. that model. Because what's exciting is, and without saying names, some of the biggest artists in the world have approached us saying, hey, yeah. they're actually easier to pitch than these middle stage artists because they're like, we've been through it. We don't want to go back. Show right. us something new. And I think we've built the most viable pathway. So if we can prove that middle stage, I think we can help actually help some of the biggest superstars in the world as well. So, you know, there are platforms out there that have existed now for a little while, um, you know, like sound royalties or royalty exchange or the music Royalties, fund yeah. and, and, and you yeah. know, where it's a similar concept where investors can essentially, you know, buy percentages of songs, you know, whether mm -hmm. various rights, whether that's the the master rights or the uh, the publishing rights. And then they earn on that investment. Uh, why do you find that this is offering something different? And what do you say to those investors? Who are like, well, I'm investing in in you know royalty exchanges, sound royalties, a music fund. Why why is this better? Yeah. Well, I think um, on a primary level, this is so much more nuanced than just hey, let's have a bunch of people put money into to an artist because capital just like with startups if it's not strategic yeah. and value add can actually yeah. be detrimental mm. if you sell your rights to someone that doesn't add value that's a bad deal too right. and i think that's something that's not talked about enough and and there are you know companies that that prey on artists in that way so i think what what our thesis is is yeah. that capital has to be strategic mm. and when you have strategic capital um and you pair it with artists with traction yeah. those embers become these massive flames and we we cool. see these songs go from you know 10 20k to a million streams a day in yeah. in two three weeks and we know that those investors are taking way more than their fair share because it wouldn't get there without that so sure. to us i think and i think in in, okay. in talking about what we do well mm -hmm. we've it was the six years seven years of work of saying okay not only do you how do you identify these amazing artists it's not about betting on artists it's not about taking from their plate. It's about how do you, who are also the people behind these artists that can create the value and put food on their plates, sure. right? Like, and I think that's um, that's been our specialty. We've aligned with some of the best strategic value add partners in the industry because when we had the data, we could see who was behind it. So uh, cool, great answer. Um, I want to uh, understand like technically, how is this working and what are you looking for? Because I know there's a bunch of artists listening right now that are already on yes. Indify dot whatever uh, com. And uh, what is the website? Indify.io. Dot io. I knew it was going to be something trendy like that. Something weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Indify, right, right. Um, you know, already on, on the website, be like, oh, I'm going to sign. I'm going to do a bunch of money. I'm talented. They're going to love my music. What do you act? Because like, all right. Yes. Here, here's the challenge these days, and and this is frustrating for a lot of artists. And I, you're an artist. You already admitted that you feel this intimately. I'm an artist. I feel this intimately. Um, unfortunately, the way that that the landscape is right now, and the social media landscape is, and the streaming landscape, um, yes, on one hand, it does enable independent artists to find an audience who can game and manipulate the system essentially and the yeah. algorithm and, and know how to work the algorithm that let's just be clear mm -hmm. here it do, has very little to do with the music really when shit is starting to trend on the stuff now 
whether you're going to maintain a lifelong career as an artist has everything yeah. to do with the music and everything to do with you as the artist. But let's just be clear. Let's not like pull punches and and pretend that like songs that go viral on TikTok is because that song is so fucking amazing. Oh, really? Those seven mm -hmm. seconds of that song is really like that is the most amazing seven seconds of any song ever in the history of the world. Give me a break. Come on. We like we know the game and we know the system and it is a fucking game. So that's all, you know, extremely frustrating and mm -hmm. demoralizing to a lot of extremely talented artists. So yes, what do you how do you you know, because if we're just looking at data, if this is just a, an algorithmic system and I'm looking at your back, well, I don't know what your back end is. I don't want you to explain this to me. But if I'm just looking at a data system and I see the trending songs on TikTok and I'm like, well, the data tells me I should invest in this song. And it's like, well, 99% of the songs that are trending on TikTok, no offense to these songs, are not very good. They just like yeah. won the TikTok lottery. So like what one, my question is, what is your solution to the talented if you have a solution maybe you don't and that's okay this isn't your lane but what do you tell these extremely talented artists that cannot crack the algorithm but let's say they're bringing you know selling hundreds of tickets in their hometown market let's say you know they're yeah. they're fucking incredible artists that are going to have li long lasting careers maybe this isn't the platform for them or maybe this isn't the time period for you or whatever what do you tell these artists do you tell them anything is this your lane and also like where what is your solution or, or how do you go about finding the talent uh or are you kind of just like you know a numbers thing it's just like oh they're starting to bubble up and trend on TikTok and spotify so we're gonna throw money at them i think that's a, another amazing question i think very central to the conversation today you know one of the things that i i find is super important within DeFi is to make sure that there aren't just those like viral funds, but there are funds building steady careers. That's happening a ton. I talk about those examples less because it's less flashy, but there's so many artists who are consistently growing. Artists like Mad Shy, Luke Chang, um, you know, there's this fund called the Garden Project, which actually, you know, is an incredible fund because uh, it's led by someone who's culturally very significant, has worked with, you know, helped early days with artists like Q and Rockhampton, like really culturally amazing artists. Mm -hmm. And he raised private capital to invest in artists specifically for the longer term sustainability of this garden that he's, he's building. So mm -hmm. to me, it's very important that Indify both uh, supports the viral build and the steady build and, right. and the kind of cultural build. But I think speaking as an artist, because I think what your question is, is it hits home to me as an artist deeply, right? It's like, yeah. I, I am struggling myself man, to try to, I, I, I do have a song forerunner, which has 7 million streams, yep. but I, I believe genuinely, I'm like, if this song organically can get to 7 million streams, why can't it get to 70? And so what I've found, and I've, I've done the 60 days of consistent posting on TikTok and, and, and tested it and learned is, you know, I think a lot of those artists, yes, like those sounds go viral, but what we've seen is generally that those trends are started in some way by the artists themselves okay. right and i think the thing that you can do is exactly what you said about artists who are building consistent fan base and sustainable fan bases yeah it starts with one you as an independent artist looking inward experiencing isolation which is something we don't do as artists as much in this day and age thinking about yourself thinking about your message and thinking about when i leave this world how do i want to leave it different I really mm -hmm. believe it starts there. And I think that's mm -hmm. something that I'm proud of really starting to get clearer on my message. And two, it's, it's then about how do I say it? How do I articulate it both creatively and visually on these platforms? Because these platforms are getting a lot of flack and rightfully so, but they're ultimately canvases. And the beauty of this day and age, and I look at it as beautiful, is we have the opportunity to paint. It's not a radio promoter and, and somebody paying somebody to put something on the radio it's in our hands, right? And we have the paintbrush and we have the canvas. So I, I encourage artists to first, I think, really understand their why, but then to look at this canvas and, and paint to build an audience. Because what I've found is when I get to the truth, the root of my message and my truth, and I, I share that on, on TikTok, and I think I, I feel it even talking to you, like your energy is, you have such a glow about you because you're so passionate about this and, and you speak so well about it. I think that's the key is finding that for yourself and, yeah. and really unlocking that ability. So 
To me, if you can do that and you can then do that consistently, the virality will come, the moment will come, but it starts with building your sustainable fan base for all of these artists, Seb included. He did that for eight months before he he ever got that moment. Well put. That's cool. That's uh that's um really nice to hear. Um but yes, and uh so now I want to get a, a you know we've we've philosophized uh enough around this now give, give yes. me the the tech whatever you can i know yes. it's proprietary uh you know whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. you got but like tell me how this pla- how it works how yes. are you discovering I mean, if, artists <laughs> for for us we have our our own kind of like uh like i said internal tools but i think for for people listening for the artists listening which i think is what you're getting at like yeah if you can build organically in that initial stage, just like how I said, by consistently kind of putting out your message and finding those those artists and yeah. you can or finding those fans, and you can get to a place where you're streaming 10,000 streams a day and you have that 2x streams to listener ratio, or you're able to get a sound moving 200 videos a day, or you're able to get 10,000 pre saves on a song, apply at indify.io and you'll be accepted. And if you're not, send me an email at shop at indify.io. And I will make sure you're accepted because <laughs> this is an important thing, right? Like the, the beauty of this day and age is the playing field has been leveled to a degree. We have these tools in our hands and everybody has that opportunity to get there. And for us at Indify, like if you are able to get there, we want to support you. 10,000 streams a day, 200 sounds a day on TikTok. Or what was the third one? Or uh, 10,000 pre-saves. 10,000 pre-saves. If you got those, you apply and we'll get you on. Got it. Those are good benchmarks. Okay, cool. Um, and you know, I, I do, I, I am curious the relationship between the investor and the artist. Um, how many, it sounds like from just the stories that you've highlighted so far, these investors are investing in the artist that they actually dig that they believe in, not just, um, it it's not like day trading uh, in no. stocks or in crypto where it's like how can i make a buck the fastest it's it's a partnership and okay i think going a step further it's not just the artists they love it's the artists they know they can add value to right uh, like okay. um for example thrice cooked is a firm that that supports and, and has you know a lot of access to channels in southeast asia so when an artist is starting to work there, they know that they can amplify that. So they're looking for those things. Like, I think the the data component for us is really an insurance policy to make sure that good deals happen, right? Like yep. if the investor can add value and help that artist and their music be exposed to a channel of a huge audience, um, then we did our jobs as Indify yeah. as the connectors, right? And, and that's what everyone has always said that we are is the connectors. And I think it's important that artists are connected with uh, investors that can service their genre and yeah. uh, their locality. Cool. So, um, how many in total investors do you have? Right now, there's uh, I think a total of fifty that are on the platform. Wow. So okay, it, it's limited. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's actually that's pretty small compared to like hundreds and thousands, right? And how uh, many artists do each investor invest in typically, or what's the average? I think. I mean, what's interesting is like where we're having success is we have like these like 20 to 30 investors who are amazing, amazingly strategic okay. and just continuing, right? Like some of them have invested in 15 artists, literally wow. like, and uh, some of them are still on their first artist. But uh-huh. what we're seeing is when you do one, you continue to invest because it's such an empowering feeling. And by the way, for those investors, it's a way better deal than the traditional music industry, right? Like if you're managing an artist, yeah. you have 15% of that artist, then the label comes and it gets diminished. You're like uh, uh, unsure if you're going to have to like be with this artist for the rest of your life and you're kind of fireable at will. And there's all this yep. thing going on. It's better to just say, hey, like, let's just work on this one song together. Yeah. And here's a percentage and it's for this period of time. And let's see how it goes. And a lot of the beauty, the beautiful thing is a lot of these artists continue to double down with certain investors. Mm. And if not, they, they go to someone else. I think with labels or with certain managers, you're stuck in those deals for life. And I don't even know what I'm going to eat for lunch tomorrow. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. I can't be signing a contract that's going to have me stuck in with this one partner for life. I think Indify mm-hmm. is a place where you can do one song with one partner, try another song with another partner. And we're starting to add more data and even the uh, reviews is something that's coming on, okay, who are these partners and how have they performed previously? 
Love to see that. Can't wait to see that. How many artists are on the platform currently? Right now, um, I mean, I think we just closed in, we actually just passed our like 100 deal mark. Okay. So, cool. and that's like awesome. through 100 songs. Uh, that's obviously some of these artists are continuing to double down. 100 songs. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, Shab, this has uh, been a very uh, illuminating conversation. And I think it's, it's exciting. And a lot of the artists and managers who are listening to this, uh, I think we, you know, if you've opened up uh, their minds to kind of what can be and what is happening. And uh, it is, you know, it's always encouraging to hear from people that are challenging the status quo of what the industry has been for so long. And, um, you know, finding a different way with that empowers artists. Um, I have one final question that I ask everyone who comes on the show, and that is, uh, what does it mean to you to make it in the new music business? Yeah, I think to me personally, you know, um, growing up, I didn't see people that look like me making music in, in pop music. And so it's important to me to prove that pathway and to prove the independent pathway myself as an artist. I think simultaneously, it's also important to me as an artist to leave the tools and the infrastructure for artists to build uh, you know, their pathways as, as independents themselves. So mm. for me, I think as Pretty Boy Shav, it's important to prove that it's possible. And as Indify, it's important to give the tools to, to show that um, you know, these people can use and actually build themselves. Love it. Pretty boy shop. Thank you so much. That's me. Thank you, man. Thanks, Art. Today's episode was edited by Max and Hunter, theme music by Brassroots District, and produced by all the great people at Ari's Take.